I couldn't say that out loud at the time, though. I didn't want to be called gay. Yeah, well, I mean, look, there's a fine line between gay and just soft. Mm. And and I, like, it, it gives me the heebie-jeebies, like, when people do their, like, little, like, dog talk. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when like the like, baby talk type I've, shit. Mm, it yeah. just grosses me out. I even have, like, um, because it's, like, it's almost like the, like, high school, like, boyfriend and a girlfriend talking to each other. Yeah. And they don't realize that everyone else can hear them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, God. I'm, like, embarrassed for you that you have a girlfriend, dude. I know, And I wish I had a girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) So I could talk like that. (laughs) So I could say stuff's cute. Yeah, and I think girlfriends are a little different. Like, you know, my my voice tonal quality definitely changes when I talk to my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I'm talking to, like, a a dog, you know? Not that, you know what I mean? It's not that much. It's just, like, I don't use, I don't talk to my girlfriend, like, using this voice. Yeah, no. Not like, yo, Liv, check this out. Yeah. Do you want to go to the movies tonight with me? But also, like, if you're talking to a dog, you're going to be like, do you want to go to the movies? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go to the movies? Yeah, yeah. It's okay to sound stupider when you talk yeah. to a dog. You're, like, oh, you're just, like, yeah. sound excited about everything. Yeah, just get it stoked. But don't be like, uh, oh, and when people do the thing where they, um, where they like, like, speak his conscious, like, he's like, oh, don't yeah. pick me up, daddy. I'm like, stop that, dude. Yeah. Stop that. And Especially that's, when it's, like, weird shit like that. That one's... Like, uh, I like I like doing it. I like narrating animals' thoughts. Mm-hmm. I think it is fun. It's it a is fun, fun bit. Yes, but it's not like mm, don't give me a cup of smudge, daddy. <laughs> it's like, bro, are you like, are you fucking that You're dog? Freaking everyone out, yeah, bro! Like, what the Jesus, fuck? Jesus, what kind of fantasy are you living in? Yeah, this dog calls you daddy. <laughs> weird. <laughs> is it like a weird kink thing? Yeah. Or like, did you fuck a dog and then that dog had that dog? <laughs> That one is almost so bad. I don't even excuse it when girls do it. Obviously, girls get way more leeway. Girls are allowed to use a different voice when they talk to a uh, like a baby or like a dog, and that's like that's fine. I don't I don't think two ways about it. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, it would almost be weird in the opposite direction if a girl didn't kind of get a little like weirder voice when she talked to a dog. Mm-hmm. Like if a girl's just talking to a dog, like, hey, what's up, man? It just kind of like. You do a voice or something. Hey. You're a chick. Hey. <laughs> hey, bitch. Like, whoa. What's up, bitch? <laughs> like, whoa, do you not? Are you not a girl? <laughs> um, yeah, so those are, you know, just rules of, of dog dog talking. Dog rules. Gotta be honest, wasn't expecting that to Neither be Neither of us have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm afraid of what I might sound like. <laughs> Open up the podcast. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. Hey, live from the studio. <laughs> I got my little snuggle buddy here with us. <laughs> this is rascal. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Seleski. I'm Eric Glazer. And we're coming at you. You know, enough of that dog talk. We got bigger, bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Um, I guess the only f- maybe the <laughs> only fish know. I'm aware of, you know, the good thing about that metaphor is that now the fish that we're frying are closer to home. If you live in Florida, get it? It's a flood joke. My girlfriend flew back early um, mm. uh, cuz we we're supposed to go to a wedding this weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh it was a good pick. I of course, I think everything's a hoax including well, weather's one of my biggest hoaxes. Um so I thought that like her, it, it's always crazy with hurricanes because with anything like that, just like anything, it's not just weather, but with anything, it's always not a thing until it is. Yeah. And then one day well, you just wake all up. Because all the forecasts were saying that it was going to hit like uh, Cuba and Puerto Rico and shit and then just go out into the ocean and be done. Yeah. And you're like, who cares? And then mm-hmm. like, I think on Saturday... I was up in West Virginia over the weekend doing a little spa trip for me and Liz's B days. Safe and sound from the hurricane. Safe and sound from the hurricane, off in the mountains in our little tiny home Airbnb. Love it. I got the I got the the ring that uh Florida's governor issued a state of emergency for uh the hur- impending hurricane and me and Joey were supposed to fly down there on Monday, I thought you were gonna say you like for you were getting shoot. engaged because no. like a little weekend getaway. Like I got the ring. I was like, dude, what the fuck? No. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? 
the fuck We're are you talking 30 about? We're only thirty for bitch? crying out loud. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What are we? 30? Think I'm getting fucking married? <laughs> <laughs> no, you got the ring from you know from Joey. <laughs> from Joey. <laughs> uh, that uh, that yeah the the hurricane was actually going to be the path switched to literally a straight line of where we were going to be landing and then shooting our video in Florida. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that's needless to say that trip got canceled last minute. Mm -hmm. Um, thank God. Postponed Um, or canceled? Postponed. 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 Um, TBD. We're still figuring out when we're going to do it just because like, I'm sure we got to wait a little bit for nature to heal because I'm sure it's probably like if we went down there now to shoot, like all the water is going to be muddy. Like all the branches are going to be broken off trees and shit. And like, yeah, you want to go there when water's clean in the streets, you know, three feet of nice, clear water. You can see the lanes when you're driving, you know, it's murky right now. It's too murky right now. There could be gators in that water. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a major, uh, downside of living in Florida. You know, I've been there twice in the past year. And uh, everything seemed up. I was like, this is awesome. This is a good state. And then, boom, you're like, oh, yeah. They are in the middle of... (laughs) They often become not land anymore. Yeah, yeah. they turn into bikini bottom every (laughs) couple of years. It's fucking insane, dude. That's something that, like, you know, we as Marylanders, we don't deal with that as often. You know, we have... We, have we had the, Irene a long ass time ago, right? Yeah, we get like the. I don't like and how that was just the Eastern Shore. Yeah, we get the white trash names for. We get Hurricane Sandy. Mm-hmm. Really, that's our. You guys get Hurricane Sandy. Ian. Ian. Irene. Irene. Yeah, Ian's not gonna hit us. Ian's, Ian's not gonna, fucking working on. Ian Wall doesn't Street want right the now. smoke up here, dude. No. Nah. You know, Ian sounds like a guy that's in your group project that does all the work. Exactly. You know, that's Andrew. Hurricane Andrew was the other one mm-hmm. that they had. Andrew sounds like a stand-up guy. You know, Hurricane Andy. Hurricane Drew maybe was not not as good. You yeah, know? Drew. That's that's when it finally hits Maryland. Yeah, Hurricane <laughs> Drew is when it makes its way up the Chesapeake. You're like, oh fucking Drew, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So shouts out to Florida, the state of Florida. You know, shouts out to also Cuba. I know we're not allowed mm-hmm. to talk about you guys and vice versa. I know there's an embargo on us acknowledging each other's existence, but shouts out to you guys for um. You know, yeah, I don't know what Cuba's the heart attack gun and. Yeah. A bunch of other cool stuff. Yeah. And Puerto Rico also, didn't they just get over a hurricane? Yeah, they just got over a hurricane um, <laughs> not too long ago. I think like their power grid was still fucked up. Yeah. And uh, I, I saw like a bunch of people like Puerto Rico has become like a cryptocurrency tax haven. <laughs> so like a bunch of like crypto millionaires recently all moved to Puerto Rico so they could like embezzle their money easier. I love that. And then instantly like, oh, power's out. I guess all my money's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, someone can erase my wealth by unplugging my computer. <laughs> oh shit. Maybe I should have thought this through. Yeah, I love how Puerto Rico like <laughs> they they finally like I like to imagine like they finally got their power grid straightened out. They were like, yeah. and we're back online. And the first thing they see on TV is like a hurricane Ian <laughs> Like, God damn it, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And Ian sounds like a crypto guy, too. Ian, Ian sounds like... Ian is a crypto guy. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's insane. I saw some videos of some sharks in the street and shit. Ooh. You see that video? I saw the time lapse in, like, Fort, Fort Myers where, like, in 20 minutes, it went from zero to six feet of water in the streets. <laughs> like, that kind of shit is so scary. It's... I think one of the, and this has got to be a dream that I'm sure you've had. I've had this on countless occasions, the tidal wave dream. Mm. Have you ever had oh, that? that is a dream of mine. It's, I would love to be in a tidal wave. <laughs> no, I've always dreamt of just surfing the tidal wave, like the fucking the Raisin Kahuna. Brand Sun guy. I don't know why I'm picturing the Raisin Brand Sun guy, but just like surfing. You know, it's like that dream is common for me where I'm just like somewhere and then I just look out, and there's just gigantic, no, like, I've never wall. had that dream, but as a kid at the beach, I remember being very, very little, mm-hmm. and, like, I was playing near the where the waves were breaking, 
And then all of a sudden, I just saw like the biggest wave I've ever seen in my life, literally just like face to face with me and just smash on me. Oh my goodness. And that was like, that made me not want to swim in the water for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, that's one of your first. It, it's good that you got that young, you know, like you got to have respect for nature. And yeah. I think that every now and then, you know, like it's amazing because there's certain things that, um, you know, you get so caught up in just the comforts of modern society that you lose touch with the fact that like no like one of the other big giveaways not to get too far off track but like just thinking about like how the um the pipeline the Nord Stream pipeline was just blown up mm. the major pipeline from that like delivers fuel to the e, to the European Union the EU and like I didn't even hear about that so basically um they don't know who did it mm. But the major pipeline that delivers like fossil fuels, natural gas, I don't know what the fuck it is, to Europe. And that's like primarily where they get their fuels to like for all their energy. Mm -hmm. And it comes from Russia. And that was blown up. Mm. And uh, who could have done that? Who could have done such a thing? I think that's the question on everyone's mind. We're all just mind boggled by just who could have done such a thing. Um, and, and one of the things I hear people talk about a lot is that like, uh, if you're Putin, first of all, I know we don't talk too much about the the the, the conflict in Ukraine a lot on this podcast, mainly because yeah, I don't know shit. About I don't it. know shit about it. I decided a long time ago that I, uh, much like the hurricane, I keep seeing people post about like Putin is like Russia is losing, Putin's losing, and then I saw today Putin was like, yeah, I'm actually announcing that we are annexing four new parts of Ukraine today. <laughs> yeah. So like, we're just going to keep expanding in is, and yeah, no is one's going to stop me, apparently. Here's the thing that Russia has always got that, um, first of all, Russia is, I guess, they are the, they are a true second world country, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, I know on the last podcast we discussed first degree, second degree murder, first degree, second degree cheating and first world, third world countries, and we always were kind of saying, like, what well, the Well, we're fuck? saying, like, there's never second degree. It's always either first or third. Yes. Um, Russia is, if I had to put my chips down for a second world country, it's Russia. Mm. Um, may, I wouldn't say China as much, but definitely Russia. Like, they strike me as this country that's, like, a lot of it is, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, we got cities and like we have big buildings and like, we you know, we, we're like definitely up there. But like for the most of those people, like they are so in tune with just like surviving the elements and just like like the whole way that they like dealt with the conflict in World War Two was like they kind of won World War Two by forcing Hitler to come to them because they understand the power of like geographical uh, advantages. Like, dude, we're the biggest country in terms of like just raw landmass like they're fucking huge mm -hmm. they're technically a european country i get, i think they technically are considered a european country they're definitely not considered an asian country like when yeah. you think of asia you don't think russia you know like china's part of asia obviously russia is like that's you know it seems european to me um they're huge though and most of it is just endless snow mm -hmm. just a gigantic tundra of snow and they knew they're like all right hitler you want to come over here and fucking take over Russia? Meet us here. Yeah. Meet us. Meet us through the, the wasteland that yeah. is Siberia. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to fucking get 300 miles in and you're going to realize, oh shit, we don't have enough food or supplies or anything to make it the rest of the 3,000 miles to the first major fucking city. Like, yeah. I don't know what the fucking deal is over there. All I know is, is they understand that like, dude, yeah. You guys in the West, you have, like, all your comforts, but, like, we lose touch with just how comfortable we are that with the flick of a switch, a, a literal flick of a switch, it turns your whole world upside down. And so Russia, from my understanding, Putin has kind of been playing this long game with this war, so he knows that, like, yeah, these oil sanctions now, they work, blah, 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 fucking blah, like, yeah, you can fucking raise gas prices and do this, do that. But when winter hits... And you're in fucking Switzerland and you're in Germany, it gets fucking cold there. And guess what? If you're not getting fuel, you're gonna be crawling back to us. Especially if we blow up the main pipeline that gives you fuel, mm. you're fucked. 
Like you can sit there in your cafe right now and it's fall and you're like, oh yeah, pumpkins and blah, blah, blah. Wait till January, bitch. Wait till January and it's $500 a month to heat your fucking house. Because guess what? I don't know if anybody's familiar with the month of January. It's the worst month of the year. There's no notable holidays. It's only notable holiday is uh, hangover day, hangover day, aka New Year's Day. The worst holiday because it directly follows what many people consider to be one of the best holidays, New Year's Eve. But that's December. That's December. All right. By the time the ball drops and you're officially in the next year, it's like, okay, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Now I'm hungover. I'm immediately hungover. So January is cold as fuck in Maryland. I can only imagine it's pretty fucking cold in Poland, in Ukraine, in Germany, in all, you know, various assorted countries that I can't name right now in Europe. Once that hits, I think that's kind of what they're going for, dude. Mm. You know, so... I did. I said not to get too far off track, but way off track. But just respect for nature, dude. Just understanding that, like, every now and then, you kind of get hit with something like a hurricane, and you're like, "Oh yeah, we're kind of bitches compared to Earth." Yeah. You know, like we built Miami. Yes, we got bottle service at this club. Yes, but also. Yeah, that in, club is gone now. The club is gone. <laughs> the club is gone. My house is underwater right now. Yeah. You know, it's just insane, dude. It really is. You see those videos where like people are like driving their cars into their living rooms to save them? No. And shit like that. Yeah. I saw a video of someone like drove their Mustang into their living room and then like boarded up their house so then it didn't get ruined. And I saw another video where a guy like he was taking a video of his garage and his two like supercars were just floating around like pinging off of each other. Oh my God. Yeah, you gotta have like a whole different level of insurance down there too. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly. Cause I bet like regular just like, you know, homeowners insurance, like it never accounts for an act of God mm -hmm. because like insurance companies suck mm -hmm. and are just there to scam you. Mm -hmm. Um, they're anti-God, really. Insurance is anti-God. Yeah. They don't believe in acts of God, even though that's usually... Isn't everything an act of God? I mean, technically, hurricanes and um, like global warming aren't an act of God. It's human-made problems. So I wonder if there's going to be like a giant like court case about that in the future. You mean hurricanes being a result of global warming, perhaps? Yeah. Um, potentially you can make that argument. Also, like, Florida hurricanes. I mean, they get them a lot, but mm -hmm. also, like, I feel like the frequency of very bad storms and, uh, like, even up here, I feel like storms have been, like, worse mm -hmm. this year than I've remembered. So you think we sue Exxon? Uh, no, I think we sue the insurance companies to be like, hey, these aren't acts of God anymore. This is like our fault that the nature is getting this bad. They have, I, from my understanding, insurance companies, uh, like, okay, so here's, here's the difference in terms of act of God, as I've under, come to understand it, uh, in terms of the act of God that we had in this studio recently, not recently, so two years ago now, mm -hmm. amazingly enough, but, uh, that, okay, so like, a hurricane, that's a natural disaster, mm. which I think is a great terminology. If you really break it down, it's like natural disaster. You're like, wow, that's harsh. Um, I mean, it sums it up pretty well. It pretty much does. It's yeah. it's one of the, it just envelops everything in there. Um, if you live in Maryland and lightning strikes your studio and causes all of your new equipment to break, that's kind of an act of God. Yeah, but you can also lie about it. <laughs> yeah, you can lie about that. You could if you, you could. wanted to. Not this is all hypotheticals. Yeah. An act of me would be to lie. <laughs> Let's say. <laughs> does does insurance cover an act of me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Because that's usually an act of me is what really fucks up most things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That was totally I do that. That was totally me. <laughs> I'd love to say that was God, but that was me. Um hurricanes, they have hurricane insurance. And honestly, if I lived in Florida, like 
dude, it's a massive payday for a lot of those people. Uh, if you're an insurance guy right now, you are loving life. Um, not the insurance companies, mm -hmm. but if you're a guy who works as a person in insurance, you are having the best year of your life, dude. I mean, I have had friends that have made their fortunes off of hurricanes. My friends made $300,000 in one year off of Hurricane Katrina by going down Jesus to New Orleans and Christ. just writing up claims, total losses on entire houses. Yeah. I mean, doesn't that sounds kind of evil, though. Doesn't it? Well, yes, and it, it <laughs> people sounds... People making their fortune off people's like personal and financial disasters. It, that is one way to think about it. I thought about it that way, too, but since I uh, you know, am a licensed insurance agent, I am an obliged... Uh, I think my license is still uh, uh, in active activity. I don't know. Um, I would say this. Uh, when your house has been swept away by a hurricane, probably your favorite person ever is the guy that flies down and writes you a $200,000 check. Yeah, that's fair. I just, I guess um, in my head, they're getting paid so much because they're fucking people out of getting those checks. Um, well, here's the other thing, and here's what blew my mind about insurance and how you it all it's counterintuitive to everything I thought. They get paid a commission rate. Um, the higher amount of claim they write, they get paid a percentage of how much the claim is. So there's actually a monetary now incentive. There's an incentive for them to give out money. More money, yes. Ooh, which is strange. Okay. Because you would think that like You think it'd be the opposite. Yes, exactly. You would think that like the smaller they can get away with writing the claim. In fact, to this day, I don't quite understand that. I don't understand that at all. I've it's been sitting in my mind. I don't it, understand it so much that I might actually have it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> from the from the best of my knowledge, my friends that did it, like they would go to a house and like they would just be hoping that like there was just because like there's like parameters. It's like okay, if X percentage of the roof is fucked up then that qualifies for a total loss on the roof and you can just pay for a whole new roof. And they would just be like praying that like, please let there be one more shingle fucked up. Like we're so close. If there's one more shingle, like I can just fucking write this whole roof off. Otherwise I have to write it off as a partial, like this quadrant. And that's ass because you don't get as much money, you know? So it's like, I'm pretty sure that that is the case, that that's how it works. And to this day, it's just sat in this little toy box in the back of my mind of things I don't get. Things that I have just, like I, I, I like to think that I kind of have a, a decently well put together idea of how the world works, but that is one of those things that just the puzzle piece doesn't fit. I might not understand that until I'm like 60, you know? Yeah. There's just certain things that like, they call it cognitive dissonance. There's like, most things in the world follow a pattern for me. Mm -hmm. um, when I see certain things happen, I go, yeah, this checks out. And then also when things happen and then I can make a prediction and be like, I feel like this is where it's going to go next. And it's like, oh yeah, it did. Oh yeah. Because it's following a pattern. That one doesn't, it doesn't. And, and who knows when I figure that out, maybe it'll flip my whole fucking world upside down, Yeah, you know? So, so it look insurance companies at the end of the day, all insurance is, is you betting against another dude that nothing, that something's going to go wrong. Yeah. That's all it is. Just you go up to a guy and be like, dude, I'll bet you $170 a month that n I'm not going to crash my car. Or I am going to crash my car. I <laughs> bet you I will crash my car. And, you're, and your insurance company says, I bet you won't mm -hmm. for $170 a month. You keep give me $170 a month and I bet you won't. And then you're like, but, and then four years later, you crash your car. And it costs two thousand dollars, and your insurance company goes, "Oh no, I lost. I guess I have to take two thousand out of this eight thousand you've paid me over yeah. the past two years." And then also now it's going to cost you one hundred eighty dollars. Yeah, now now we're <laughs> up in the ante as well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> What's like the betting term where it's like, all right, double, <laughs> double, raise, call, <laughs> double, right, double down. or nothing, double or nothing, double or nothing. That's yes. It. <laughs> that is double or nothing, dude. That's all insurance. And like, you know what? With with certain things, it makes sense. Uh, car insurance, you got to have car insurance. You I know? think legally you have to. Oh, yeah. You can't drive without at least liability. You have mm -hmm. to at least have insurance to cover damage you inflict upon someone else. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um, It was a law that you needed to have health insurance. 
It no longer is a law. Uh, it used to literally be a law up until I think like four years ago. Yeah, like you right before we got off our parents' insurance. <laughs> yes, you used to have to pay. You had to pay a fine uh, for not having insurance. Yeah, on your taxes. And the fine was suspiciously, suspiciously the same amount you would have had to pay if you just got government insurance. So that was intriguing. I always thought. But there's certain things that make sense. You know, this is the third podcast in a row that I'm going to touch back to my Fells Point incident. But a recently new development came to find out that it's not covered through his car insurance there. It's covered through his homeowner's insurance. I hate when people talk to you like like I'm supposed to know some shit. Like I call it up. I'm like, oh, yeah. So you go through the car insurance. This didn't happen at either of our homes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Why would my first thought be like, okay, I got to get his homeowner's insurance oh yeah of course of course and what if he doesn't own a home i don't fucking know like yeah can it come out of his fucking medical insurance like he he physically fell into the car (laughs) 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 ultimately the the amazing thing about life is that like sometimes like like who pays for it who pays for life if i'm a homeless guy and i fall into your car it's like, well, I don't have homeowner's insurance because I'm not even a homeowner. And I, I don't even be a home, I'm not a homeowner. And yeah. I'm not homeless. I'm homeowner. Uh-huh. But your rental insurance isn't going to cover you like s- accidentally scratching paint on someone's car. I don't know if I have fucking renter's insurance, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I got renter's insurance, uh, I think, the first year I moved in. And then. Like I do you have do you have rental? I don't know. Does anybody? I had I had it for one of my places because they like required it. Mm-hmm. Um and it was only like twenty bucks a month, so it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. And but, you pay it all at once, right? It's no, like, it was like a monthly thing. Oh, okay. Um I did like the lemonade shit. Uh but lemonade. Never you know, I just stopped paying it after a while because I was like, I'm not going to need this. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think that's what I did too. I don't, I don't haven't paid renter's insurance. Like, yeah, I, I think I paid it to like show the proof and then like I let a couple of them slide because I forgot about it. And yeah. Then I, was like, ah, I'm not, I don't need this. Yeah. I don't know what the <laughs> charge looks like unless the charge looks like fucking like El Buffalo taquitos and taqueria. I don't know what the fuck bank charge exists in my account that would be renter's insurance. So I like, if I were to do that, if I were to damage something of someone's, like, I'm now learning that that falls on your homeowner's slash renter's insurance, and... Maybe not renter's insurance. <laughs> we just kind of theorized that, right? Oh, I mean, look, I mean, <laughs> what percentage of people own homes? There's no way yeah. that, like, like, renter's insurance covers a surprising amount of things. Um, all uh, I don't think anybody's ever used it. Uh, which is why it's only twenty dollars a month. I think it's just like another thing you need to have to get a place, and that's. I think that's how every place works. It when you rent is they're just like, look, if you're gonna move in, you have to have renters insurance. If you want to live here for like eight more years and not have it for the next seven years, I don't care. Yeah, you know, like I don't know who pays for that shit. Like when the fucking dog in the alley bit uh. Uh, like, uh, got my brother, and it's like, who pays for that? Mm-hmm. Who pays for that? Us. We owe. We now owe a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in medical bills, uh, because your dog bit us. Well, this guy didn't have any money. Well, it's like, okay, so now what? Like, literally, now what? You know. So I get having insurance, and I get that like, it is annoying to have it but at the same time it's like i think that like we should just everybody should just have insurance that covers everything everything insurance i was gonna call it life insurance but that's already a thing yeah (laughs) life insurance really capitalize on a great name for this concept they should they should get rid of regular life insurance because that's death insurance that's what it is that's what the excellent excellent fucking idea because car insurance is most important when you no longer have a car Mm -hmm. home insurance is most important when you no longer have a home my home was swept away i need to ensure that i have another home life insurance death insurance is what you need life insurance should be anything that happens while you're alive Mm -hmm. and that should cover your car your home it should be all one thing and that way when i'm walking down the street and i fucking trip and fall through the window of a fucking chocolate store that's covered by my life insurance policy. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, <laughs> who covers that? I can't pay for that window, dude. Uh, I don't know, dude. These are all I like, like you know, like once they want, like health insurance, that makes sense. Like just all of that shit, dude. And then when you add a new thing that's valuable, you just tack that onto your premium. Like, dude, now I got a car. They're like, all right, your life insurance is this much more. Because your life is worth this much more. Mm -hmm. The more stuff you own, and this is the important takeaway, the more you have, the more you're worth. I hate to say that that goes against everything that they might teach you. But in terms of insurance, it's like if you don't have a car, you're far less of a liability than a guy with a car. You're also worth more. You're also better. You're a better person (laughs) if you have a car. (laughs) I hate saying these things, but come on. Get a fucking car. It's all true, though. I mean, it's true, dude. Um, we can switch topics. We can. Yeah. Uh, I can talk a little bit about my trip. Oh yes, to, please uh, do. Please do. Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, a small little spa town in the uh, Capacan Mountains. It's literally a spa town. Yeah. So it was originally. Here's the story. Went to the museum in Berkeley Springs. Okay. Apparently. Uh, the original hot towel. So they, so it was a um, a stop on the B and O railroad eventually. So then it like became a vacation slash like you know weekend getaway thing for people in DC and Baltimore to go out to the hot springs. Mm-hmm. But originally they found the hot springs because they saw a bunch of Native Americans like going into the water and like relaxing, and they do it for like therapy and shit we were like and we were like that. yo but we should do that and <laughs> kick them out <laughs> <laughs> so like george washington had his own little spa in that town like people there they had like a map it looked like a cemetery and wow. people just had all these little plots for their own personal bath and uh basically like the water that comes up it's like a sulfur spring so mm-hmm. it's like naturally heated water um but also one of the things that they did in that town was they made it a law that the natural like uh spring water was free for anyone in the town Bad so like move. no i think that's a cool move <laughs> okay um and even when we were there this past weekend like in the main park they had a bunch of like water filling stations. So like we filled our water bottles there a couple days, but every day, all day long, people were like bringing those big ass, like five gallon plus jugs of water mm-hmm. and just filling them up. They, like People would bring like wagons with a bunch of like gallon milk jugs and like uh. water bottles and everything. People would just like, go there all day long, filling shit up. It was insane. Oh, I thought you meant free to like chill in the, the springs. But you're um, saying like free to just get natural spring water? Yeah, like free drinking water. Is it hot when you bottle it? No. So it's a different source. Um, and I think they for the natural spring shit, we didn't check it out, but one of the like parks had a um a hot spring in it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's, you know, something you gotta pay for or whatever, but obviously in the town there are like private spas and shit. And we ended up going to one of the private spas because they had a, what they were calling, they're billing it as the Appalachian Love Package. Wow. <laughs> it was for a couple's Whirlpool, Whirlpool Jacuzzi, um, hour-long massage, and then a facial, which also had a massage on it, too. Ooh. Yeah. So living like royalty out there in, so <laughs> in you're coming here springs post facial post facial my face is fucked up wow yeah it's unfortunate that i'm unable to think of anything other than some west virginian guy busting on your face <laughs> when you, see, you got a facial no it's just i'm like sure it was much more relaxing than that two, like you know older women just being oh. like Oh yeah, and we're gonna do a hot towel and <laughs> <laughs> that's hot. Where where do you feel it? How are you, where are you uncomfortable? Did it work? Um, the facial was nice. The regular uh, massage was nice, but I had never gotten a massage before. Have you ever gotten a massage no. before? Mm-mm. I didn't know what to expect. Um, and it was a little bit different than I expected. I think I got what they call a Swedish massage. 
which is more just like a muscle massage and a muscle rub down. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like they weren't like digging in and breaking up knots and shit. That's what I wanted. I wanted like a deep tissue massage, I'm guessing. Yeah. Like I wanted to get beat up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, beat up and get the yeah, the sweetest like beat up bust on my face fucking. yeah the happy ending <laughs> swedes are not known for their happy endings you know i didn't want a happy ending ah oh. but uh yeah i definitely wanted them to like stomp on my back or something get shit. in there yeah i think uh, that's called a deep deep tissue massage yeah was that on the package? Was that like the Appalachian fucking... <laughs> Appalachian fucking <laughs> saw experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Um, but the massage was nice. It was nice. I'll give it to them that it was nice. Okay. And it like it was definitely relaxing. Um, it definitely worked out some things on my, my shoulder that I was like hoping would happen, mm-hmm. but not to the extent where I was like, this is a miracle. Yeah. Like, this is a... All one time fix all. Yeah, you cure. didn't walk out with like a new posture. No, I didn't walk wow. out like six seven. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> I have abs. I have abs. Yeah, just instant abs. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I'm honestly kind of, I'm honestly high key, mid key, jealous a little bit. Yeah, you of should. The be. massage experience. So what does the facial entail? What do they do? Just rub your face? The facial? Yeah, they um, they put like some sort of mask on. Like rub, wash it off with a hot towel, then put a hot towel on your face, put some like moisturizer shit on. I, I assume I don't know. My eyes were closed the whole time. Yeah, you want to be looking. I, yeah, I, I treat a massage almost like I treat a haircut. Like, yeah, I don't go to a haircut. I'm not like talking with the person. I'm not like you know being the life of the room. Like, I'm not going to like a barbershop. I'm going to a fucking sports clips. Yeah, closing my eyes mm-hmm. and just pretending like I'm asleep until they're done. Yeah, you don't want to have that conversation at a sports clips, no. you know, because it's not. I was actually, you know, no one on earth is more familiar with a haircut than me today because yeah, I got one. I, I like the haircut. I had to get one, dude. I, I a very unfortunately named haircut. I hate when they do this when they name, like they had this like uh, like poster from like, yeah, the, like 19- the picture board of yeah. all the different styles that's another we start off this podcast talking about things guys shouldn't do mm-hmm. and uh i think one of the things uh that is cringe to me is like finding a picture of a haircut you want yeah i want to be this guy i want to be this guy like that's a common <laughs> thing i think that's totally acceptable for girls they see haircut on something and they're like "Ooh, can you do this and they're like yeah i got you girl oh my god slay mm-hmm. it's like awesome cool here 400 bucks for that I don't want to walk in and be like, can you make me look like this guy? And they're like, no, there's nothing. Because a barbershop will let you know. They're like, dude, this, you're not going to look like this guy. Yeah, this guy's too hot. You're fucking balding. <laughs> you want me to give you hair and then yeah. cut it? No. It wasn't going to work. <laughs> so there was this poster on the board from like uh, the 1920s, it looked like. And it was like all these old fashioned haircuts. And I was like, dude, this one looks sick. And then I looked down and it was called. I can't even say it. it was called the Playboy. The Playboy. The Playboy. Oh no! And so now, from across the room, the guy's like, "What are you thinking, dude? What do you want?" And I was like, "All right, first of all, keep it down." A little bit. <laughs> can I? Can I can you wait till I get Where's over the there? barber Barbie <laughs> fucking confidentiality here, bro? Like, I don't want to be telling people from across the room what I want to look like. I want people sitting on the couch watching me get a haircut to be like, "Oh, it just worked out that way." He probably didn't plan that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "All right, dude." See so that picture over there? He's like, which one? Which one? I'm like, lower, lower left. He's like, oh, yeah, I got you. And then he s- screams across the room to the owner. Hey, man, how do you do the Playboy haircut? The Playboy, this guy wants the Playboy haircut. Um, uh, <laughs> that's an undercut, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that, now there's a whole tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what you're going to do, if you want to get the Playboy right, you want to fucking trim up the thing. I'm just sitting there. Everybody in the room is just looking at me. Just I'm just like, dude, Jesus. Jeez. Just give, just give me a bowl cut. Just, <laughs> just buzz it off at this point, dude. <laughs> Clean shave. Johnny sins my fucking head right now, dude. Honestly, I'm fucking done. God, dude. Ooh, how many people are in there? It was just me. Two barbers and like two other dudes. Mm-hmm. That's enough. It's a small. It's the room is like barely bigger than the studio. Okay, that's enough people. Yeah, to be so embarrassed. they all definitely heard. Oh yeah, one of them like knows me. He like he like is a patron at like the Elks Club that always books me for mm-hmm. stuff. And we were talking beforehand, 
about like shit and then I'm like now I'm just embarrassed. Yeah. Now I can't even look at this guy anymore. <laughs> now he's gonna know me as the Playboy. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna walk. Like, What's up, Playboy? I'm like, no, dude. I'm never gonna haircut again, dude. <laughs> That being said, I'm liking the cut, dude. I'm yeah, liking the cut. The cut. Is fresh. Mm-hmm. Was that um, for the gig or was that just like I got to get it? Done? It's kind of for the wedding tomorrow too. True. Like my hair has been kind of going brazy lately, and honestly, uh, you know, I've noticed that th- you can just kind of tell when you look better and when you look worse. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in the past three weeks, I've been getting more signs of looking better. If that makes any sense. So I was almost hesitant to trim it off because I was like, maybe there's something about like having the longer hair that makes me look like younger, you mm-hmm. know, like that's a total thing. Yeah, for sure. You know, if I just get like the dad cut, it's just like, you know. Yeah. So like, I was like, should I do this, dude? What if I come out of this looking 30? I don't mm-hmm. want that. Yeah. What if you're like Samson and once yeah. you get your hair cut, <laughs> you're instantly now in your 30s. Yeah. I'm like you're still tr- hanging on to 29 year old hair. Yeah, I was. And now I'm not, dude. That was that. That's true. That was my the last haircut of my that was the last hair of my 20s. Yeah. You know, this is it. This is fucking it, baby. Um, so I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping I don't show up to my gig tonight. and I'm just all of a sudden like, <laughs> fuck, dude. I can't even play. None of the fucking cougars even look it in your direction. Uh, so like, like, oh, he's too old now. Yeah, like, what are you, our age? <laughs> are you also divorced? That's sad. Shouldn't you be at high tops? <laughs> You're divorced, right? This is for divorced moms, not divorced dads. Divorced dads go to high tops and try to pick up on unmarried young girls. <laughs> I've been doing that. <laughs> Get out of here. Regular age guy. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you're too old to be working here, so <laughs> you've got to be a divorced dad, right? <laughs> God damn, my kids are not going to hear about this. <laughs> yeah, dude, so barbershops are cool, and like, but like, yeah, it's it's a different experience. Like, you got to have that old school barbershop feel, and like, you got to be able to, like, I, I like that, you know, like, talking at the thing, and like, we're just talking about like the one barber just it's almost like you almost have to believe it's like part of their whole thing. Like mm-hmm. it seemed almost scripted in a way. I know it wasn't scripted, but I know for a fact that like that main guy, Steven, shouts out Haraway to Steven. He's like a super like cool. You can tell he was like an old school like punk guy. Like he mm-hmm. still has like that like 90s punk look, like the mutton chops and the mustache. Like this guy was definitely at a few auto bar shows back in the day like there's no fucking doubt he probably still is there he's probably there right now and like i'm just sitting there and it's just kind of like silent whatever everybody's just kind of like shaking off the cringe of me getting my hair cut and then my barber just goes yo you know that dude that um i was telling you i was hanging out with that cheated on his wife and they called off the wedding and i was like Ooh, juicy. <laughs> and next thing you know, we're just talking about this dude who was like fucking trying to hook up with the girl on his bachelor trip. And he was like, yeah, man, I wasn't even trying to go to that. Cause like he said, even before the bachelor trip, he was like, yeah, just trying to hook up with one last chick before I fucking get married. And Jesus. I was great, great barbershop banter. Yeah. All right. He didn't just sit there and go, yeah, dude, I actually opted for the tuna sandwich today, man. It was a good pick. Cause you know that, that place, they, I don't really like it on white toast, but like their wheat bread is really no fuck all that, dude. This guy yeah. goes balls deep into the fucking. My friend had to get his wedding called off two weeks before the wedding because he cheated on his wife, future wife, during the bachelor party, and then he ran into the guy uh, a couple weeks. He ran into his wife a couple weeks ago. She was with a new guy, and he and the new guy had a stare down in the bathroom. Ooh. I was like, this is awesome, dude. This is awesome. It's like there's no way that that business owner wasn't like, dude, here's the deal. We're giving haircuts, yes, but that's one half of the barbershop, okay? I need you to come in here with fucking topics. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't run that conversation back every hour (laughs) on the hour. (laughs) And you know what? I respect that. I think it's cool in their contract that they have to bring enough gossip to fill the (laughs) the Uh, talking day. Uh, Yeah, dude. I mean, there's very few jobs that require that much personability, and that's one of them, dude. Like, I mean, they're basically like bartenders that aren't alcoholics, right? mm. 
because they're able to they can kind of just like spark up conversation they know how to fucking they've talked to enough people to fucking know social cues they (laughs) they are personal bartenders there i would even venture to say and you know i have a very uh industry restaurant industry bias towards the amount of uh personality skills that you should have to be a successful bartender or waiter or whatever i would wager to say that uh it takes more personal skills to be a barber than a bartender you yeah, know because a little lubricant you can't take a shot there and also you can bounce You're not around drinking barbicide <laughs> a bartender a bartender just has to be good for like the couple minutes that you talk mm-hmm. like a bartender can like drop you off a couple shots you bring up some conversation a bartender needs to be good at bullshitting for us for one conversation they just need to be like yeah dude so anyway i was down the fucking street and this guy fucking like trips and falls in the street and you're like dude that's fucking crazy man you fucking rock and then he's serving the next guy and then next round he comes over he's like yeah so yeah anyway my fucking girlfriend's being annoying and like she's telling me i can't go out for a drink after work. i'm like fuck that dude come on man i'm fucking working a double today are you kidding me i'm fucking opening tomorrow i'm closing night opening tomorrow fucking opening shift do you guys want to do a round yeah let's do another round dude come on blah blah blah. you're like yeah i fucking love this guy he's so chill that's a bartender you know barber is just sitting there like that would be like if a bartender was just standing behind your stool while you're fucking sitting there watching the game and just constant conversation. So anyway, man, what do you do for work? It's like, dude, holy shit. Like, you are amazing at conversation. You can't even go away. You can, you're not cutting four people's hair at one time. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of skill, dude. I don't even know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it because you know how much I hate repeating stories. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. It'd be impossible. It'd be impossible, dude. I'd be midway through a shift just on the bare bones i would start out the shift like i'm starting the podcast like (laughs) i need one hour of clean solid content and then by fucking after lunch i'm like yeah so anyway i i I went for the uh, tuna sandwich and (laughs) they have great i already said this earlier they have great wheat toast and (laughs) all right you should probably go to sports clips because this (laughs) isn't getting any better bro (laughs) Well, yeah, dude, I, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about how, you know, getting your hair cut is like a culture, you know, and getting, getting spash is a culture and bringing it back to your trip is like, like those are things that like when I watch the Jersey Shore, mm-hmm. like there's like two types of dudes and it's cool how equally both types of dudes are cool. Like there's like the rock and roll, haven't gotten my hair cut in like four years, long hair guy, which is kind of retro. Yeah. Unfortunately... It's not a thing anymore to have like long hair. When I think of like Baltimore rock bands, I think of like guys in like khakis and like a tucked in t-shirt and like a fucking like freshman year of college haircut. And it's like, dude, is that rock? Are you rock right now? Are you rocking me right now with your fucking substitute teacher's friend outfit? Yeah, the I wasn't expected to go out tonight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. This is a formal event. Let me tuck in my T-shirt so it looks like I at least tried at this Metro Gallery concert. <laughs> yeah, great look, dude. Great look, Baltimore indie scene. God, what a fucking stupid aesthetic. I've always hated that. I've always hated that. But, uh, yeah, dude, it's unfortunate that, like, rock and roll... It's just like, what happened? I, I was at Perennial, and uh, our, our, my friends, whom shall not be named, but I've talked about this older couple whose daughter, we had a, a brief dating saga, mm-hmm. and um, they're still unbeknownst. But uh, they um, brought in their friends, another couple, which is what you do. I don't know if anybody's heard of this, but when you're older... You and your wife have friends. This is yeah. what I've gathered. You don't just have your friends. And it's friend. not just like one person. It's yeah. usually another couple. Yeah, it's another couple. And this is something that we're starting to realize now with like, I've just been, couldn't help but notice that like, I'm not getting invited to like a baby shower for this person, not getting invited to like a this thing for that person. It's like, oh yeah, because I am not in that like tier. Yet. Yeah. Like I don't also have like a fiance and like a kid. So, like, I'm just there, like, 
single, not single, but like when you're married, anyone who's not married is single. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I'm sorry. It's like there's a re- like married people look at being single the same way the IRS looks at being single. It's like, dude, okay, great. You're dating someone. I remember when I was dating someone and then I sacked up and got married. All right. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, you're fucking single. Okay. And it's like, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I would go as far to say that when people get engaged, that's when they start looking down on it because they they're they're like finally it's almost official. Yes, yes, now yes. We can look down on everyone. Yes, I think that's totally <laughs> fair. I think that's totally fair. Being engaged is a massive, massive fucking move, and like it amazes me how many people break up post engagement. Like I've been watching. A, I watched this uh, show. Um, that I, I, I admittedly watched alone the first time. Um, but uh, I think it's a show that you should watch with your girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> and it's The Haunting. It's oh, the, I, okay. love, I, I love that show. I thought you were going to be like uh, uh, Desperate Housewives Atlanta. <laughs> 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 like, the Haunting is like, are you? Sh- I mean, you could probably watch that alone. Oh, you totally could. It's like a horror show. I have it? very, I have very <laughs> flawed and skewed and distorted uh, ideals of masculinity, <laughs> which surprises absolutely nobody. There's no one here to have me be their anchor. <laughs> exactly, dude. It's like there are certain times, like who am I going to act tough to by myself? <laughs> I'm not even scared. <laughs> but let's watch the next episode because I really want to know what happens. Also, leave that light on. Also, make sure that door is locked. Also, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> but yeah, fuck oh, this let show. go of you? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> did that unconsciously. <laughs> I was oh, just no, waiting was for just, it to get... To- I was just cuddling. <laughs> I was just on the edge of my seat, wondering when it was going to get scary. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually thinking about going to the bathroom, but then I I, I peed my pants by accident. Because I want to leave you. I didn't want to leave during, this seemed like something like big was about to happen, so. <laughs> oh, it just happened? Oh, you're telling me the scary thing just happened? I didn't even notice. But anyway, I'm going to go get changed. Oh, when did I pee my pants? <laughs> Way before that. <laughs> they came like that. I bought them like this. Pre-pissed yeah. pants. They were on sale. <laughs> um, but yeah, The Haunting. It's a good series. And uh, after that entire bit, I forgot exactly why I brought it up. What the fuck were you're we talking You're saying um, it'd be a good thing to watch with your girlfriend. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you're saying the first time I watched it alone, then did you watch it with your girlfriend? Yes, I watched it the second time around with my girlfriend. It's a good show. Okay. It's a good show. Um, and was that going to tie into... Oh, yes. In that series, the the main character in the second season, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Mm. You know, I, I, I like English shit. I like when people speak English yeah. the right, the wrong way. I'm it also, go... it's like, it's so far out of like, I feel like a lot of times, especially like getting older and like, you know, all the actors and actresses that are in things. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, this this isn't like the best example because it's such like a like it's really only his problem. But for The Rock, mm-hmm. like I can't take The Rock in anything seriously anymore because I'm just like you are The Rock. Yeah, my you know my suspensive belief or whatever the fuck it is, suspensive disbelief. Yeah, yes, is like it's you know. I can't even happen. I honestly. So when you watch English shows, mm-hmm. when you watch people, you're like, oh, I don't know this actor. Even if I do, I'm like, I don't, I don't recognize their regular voice, and this one, mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know. You know, that's actually a very uh, uh, good observation. Is that I think so much of it is, and it's the same reason why. When and it's they, like in completely different settings. It doesn't yeah. look like every old fucking. You know, when you watch an old, a movie based even in like, you know, the classic trope, at least in my life, I've said this a billion times, but when you watch like an older movie, like it could be like about the fucking like ancient Greeks, like they all have English accents. And it's like, well, the Greeks didn't have British accents, but it's mm-hmm. like they do the accent because on some subconscious level, it separates you from just viewing them as like regular dudes like if you're watching 300 and fucking king leonidas is just like tonight 
Our arrows are going to blot out the sun, dude. Yeah. Tonight, we dine in hell. Yeah, you're just like... <laughs> it's like, what? I feel like Bill said that last night. <laughs> 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 Fucking Arby's. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it, like, when you hear it's like, Spartans! Tonight we dine in hell, and you're like, "Oh shit, this fucking this is." I believe this now. This happened, and it's weird. There's certain things like that, like even with like I've been following this page on Instagram called History Colored, and uh, it's not what you think. It's just black and white pictures, colored, mm-hmm. and um, it is kind of a mind fuck a little bit. Like I like the pictures are one thing. Like you see a picture from like I actually shared a recent picture to my Instagram story of um it was a picture taken in 1897 of this Hawaiian surfer mm-hmm. and they it was obviously originally taken in black and white and they retroactively colored colored it in to make it look like it was taken modern day and it fucks with you because when you see it in black and white there's something in your mind that just says oh this is old you don't see them as like like you. You just see them as like, this is an older person in an older time, and they were just different, and blah, 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 blah. And then you see it in color, and it makes it look like it, the picture was taken yesterday, and you're like, wait, you said it was taken in 1897? And it's like the same beach. The dude is just sitting there in like a regular bathing suit, just like looking at the ocean, just looking like a cool dude now. Mm-hmm. And it just, so you're just like, what the fuck? Like it just, it does fuck with you in that aspect. What's even weirder? is um it's one thing when people because they even had this old like one of the original pictures like taken in like the early 18 like 50s or 60s was this couple had a camera and they took a selfie Ooh. and they color and and they even in the black and white it fucks with you because you're not used to seeing people from that era in that context whenever you see an older picture it's like everybody is in the middle of the worst day of their life all the time it's just like you see a picture and it's just like five men with like handlebar mustaches like next to a mine that they just crawled out of for like one minute before they go back and they're just like and you could just tell that their lives were shit yeah everyone just like looks pissed off pissed in off old photos yeah. <laughs> then you see this picture from that same time period and it's like a young guy and girlfriend couple whatever and they just take a selfie and they're both like smiling like this and you're like holy shit that kind of fucked with me a little bit. It's like you're not used to seeing people like that. The 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 weirdest one was I saw a uh, a video that from 1902 of these of it was just a regular day at the beach. And if I had seen it in black and white, it still would have struck me. If you see it in black and white, you can your mind says, "Oh, this is old." So all the things you're about to see make sense because it's old. Like Oh, you're noticing that like girls are walking around in full little girls are walking around in full dresses playing in the sand. Full dresses. Yeah. Not bathing suits. And the boys are wearing like wrestling singlets in the ocean. And when you see it in black and white, you're like, oh, you 1902 people. Totally different. Whatever. Then they colored it in. And it was honest. uh, What is this in England? (laughs) 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 What? This is Wales. Um (laughs) Is this Dude, the Geordie Shore? It <laughs> <laughs> That's their version of Jersey Shore. The Geordie Shore. <laughs> right all. Dude, it was honestly like a horror movie. It was so weird to see in color just people walking around the beach in like dresses and like doing the same things that we would be doing. Like the kids are building sandcastles. Moms are sitting there like yapping. And like the boys are like fucking jumping in the waves. But they're in this like weird garb. And it looks like um, it looks like a scene from that like M. Night Shyamalan movie. Like The Village. When you like see like the modern day. But like juxtaposed with like old school things. It's just weird. Yeah. And so going back to the point about like the British accent, like so many of those things are learned uh, barriers in our mind in terms of like we really do like when I think of the 50s, I can't help but think that everything was in black and white. I just cannot help but just when I picture Baltimore in 1953, Fells Point, my mind pictures it in black and white. Like, all of a sudden, one day, there was just color in, like, 1968. Well, that's, like, a phenomena for, like, dreams and shit, too, with, like, older people who, like, uh, grew up with only, like, black and white movies and television. They really only dreamed in black and white. 
Yeah. And then it wasn't until, you know, Technicolor and all that shit and movies and TV started being in color that when people started dreaming in color. Yeah. So there's like a weird like subconscious tie into that Yeah, I've heard about that. People dreaming in black and white. Totally a thing. Do you think that people born in 1920 dream in silent movie? Maybe. (laughs) Like, Like they're just like, and then there's like a little sign that says like, where are you going? You're yeah. like, oh shit. Maybe. I don't I know. I think people's like theories with that are is that like movies are one of the things in life that is almost like equivalent to like a dream. Just because yeah. it's not real, it's completely made up and you're using things from real life to make the story and you know, make it possible. And then yeah, I don't know where the theory ends after that. The theory ends with being like, it's it, like it 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 like just like we're talking about with the British accents and seeing things differently. It's like so much of our suspension of like like when you're in a dream, your suspension of disbelief is zero context, and I think that's kind of the the main uh, thing here. In order to And this is, whoa, whoa. In order to make someone follow with you on a train of thought, you first have to tap into their suspension or their, uh, uh, what is the word? Like there's a term that's used for when you can kind of like put somebody in a neutral state where they just are ready to be just absorb information. Like you break down their um, reflexive barriers because the mind naturally has defenses that it puts up when introduced to new and contradictory information. Mm. And this is something that I was, you know, this all ties in, but this is something I was watching a a video on YouTube, believe it or not, um, of uh, talking about uh, TV hypnosis and how... It's an actual documented phenomenon that it, more than documented, it's it's actually put into practice, some would say, uh, that just when people are just sitting in a room in front of a screen, um, something about just that, like, I've always said this, if you were to take any person staring at their phone or looking at a TV and then just remove the phone or TV and just now you're just watching a person do this for an hour. Mm-hmm. Or now you're just watching a person look at their hand for an hour. It's amazing that like if you were to actually take away the thing and just look at the mental state that you're in when you're consuming media, it's incredibly hip hypnotizy. Hypnotic. A, hypnotic. It seems hypnotic. And so in a lot of ways. Um, if you look at even the theory, so much of psychology is built around, um, what do they call it in psychology? A breaking point. Um, in order to, and, and this is this is everything that you think about when you look at AA, when they talk about rehab, the first step is admitting you have a problem. The first step to anything, to introducing a new idea, is to break down the old idea. It's It's vital. Or bypass it. And how do you bypass it? Well, you put somebody in a neutral state. If you're watching a movie and people talk the way you're used to them talking and you're seeing a scenery that you're used to seeing, just like when, like, we benefit because we didn't grow up in New York City, but I imagine, like, you know, most movies are filled in fucking New York and L.A., like, that. most movies, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously not all, but a vastly disproportionate amount are based in these two major cities. And so I always imagine like, what if I grew up in New York and like every movie I saw was like me watching the wire where like, I'm familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the accent. Like I'm used to all this shit. Yeah. That street. You said it was that street. It's actually that street. Now, now I'm involved in the movie. I'm not my, my suspension disbelief has not been engaged because I'm too familiar with the territory. So think about it this way. Now you're watching a movie based about Alexander the fucking great. Alexander the great. Okay, give him an accent that I'm not familiar with. Give him the British accent. I'm not used to hearing the British accent on a day-to-day basis. All right, so now now my mind is one step removed from reality. Now I'm hearing a bunch of British shit. And I'm like, okay, this this is automatically not normal. And now it's in a land that I've never seen with a with a fucking, you know, 
geography that I'm unfamiliar with. And now all of a sudden, my mind, all its defenses that are built around this whole thing of like, I'm, I see this, I, I'm familiar with this, and I'm still in my own Jimmy Selesky mind. Because everything that's happening to me is something I'm used to. And therefore, if you try to introduce a new idea, or if you try to tell me that this guy can suddenly fly, or there's a ghost over there, there's something in my mind that just goes, I mean, okay, fine, if that's what you want to tell me, there's a ghost over there. But like, I know there's not a ghost. But when you start talking British and shit, and you're doing all this stuff, I'm like, oh, there's, so, so fucking, there's a British ghost there's over there. There's a British there. ghost over there. <laughs> they have ghosts in Britain? I don't know. I think they might. I don't know. But it's like there's something about that concept of breaking down first everything that you thought you knew and bypassing it to then inject the new idea. And that's done with movies constantly. And not to get way, 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 way too crazy about it, but if you take that concept to a larger scale and you look at how like every type of regime has risen in terms of like tyranny and things like that. If you look at the first step they always did, it was about breaking down the foundations of the society that already existed. It was about saying first, before we can introduce you to this new way of thinking, we first have to destroy all the things you think are good or that you think you know. In order to introduce this new way you, if you, we have to first put you in a suspension of disbelief. You have to first put you in a, in, a, in, a, in a state of impressionability, right? So what do they do in the military? Why don't they take, I got in this debate with um, Lucas Mosca the other day, not debate, but it's a, uh, just um, talking about how Navy SEALs, they don't take anybody usually over 28 to mm -hmm. go in. And I always say, a, a, a lot of people, would their knee-jerk reaction would be, oh, that's probably because of the physical thing. Right. It's probably because, you know, at that age, your body is no longer able to withstand, withstand the massive physical punishment that goes along with Hell Week and all the Navy SEAL training or whatever. OK, fair. But also look at the fucking NFL. Look at like m like professional sports. Like most people don't even hit like their stride in terms of like athletic performance like most athletes would be considered in the prime of their career in their late twenties to like very early thirties, I would say mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, look at the difference between a, a freshman in college and a senior in college, senior in college, is about 22 years old. Then that senior in college goes to the NFL and gets lit the fuck up. He's a fucking rookie. Welcome to the NFL, bitch. You got about three years before you're fucking as big as an NFL quarterback before yeah. you're, before you can run over a fucking Ray Lewis in the NFL. It's like, so Okay, fine. You could make that argument, but at the same time, it's like there, there's. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh no, it's absolutely a physical thing that like when you're 29 years old, your body is just too old now. It's like I'm pretty sure like the best fucking running back in the league sometimes is 29 years old. Like I don't get it. I think it more so has to do with the mental state because part of going to the military is they take these impressionable young men, impressionable. Sorry. I hate the fact that that's more than three syllables. Mm -hmm. um, impressionable young men at 18, 19 years old. And what do they do? Completely remove their sense of identity. Boom. Put them in a group. Make them, you know, not think individually. Think as a unit. Yes. And then also just follow your commander. Boom. They follow, remove, listen to authority. They remove all sense of identity. And what is identity? Identity is you. Identity is everything you know, everything you remember. My only sense of what is me, who is Jimmy Selesky, um, is well, the Playboy haircut. Is the Playboy? It's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing to go in the. Military. That's the first thing most people think when they, <laughs> 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 including me. <laughs> um, if you really break it down, all you are, and obviously me the way like like Eric Glazer to me is different than Eric Glazer to you because mm -hmm. I see you from a different perspective. I'm not in your inner thoughts. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in your mind right now. I know what you look like might be going on right now and that's my impression of you. So Eric Glazer to me is different than Eric Glazer to you. But identity is who are you to you? What is you? Well, you are a series of all the thoughts you ever had and all the memories you have up to this point. And that's why when you're in a present moment, 
it makes sense because there's some part of your mind that can go, okay, it makes sense that I'm at the studio right now because uh, yesterday Jimmy texted me and said, yo, let's do the podcast tomorrow. And then I went to work and then I drove here and now I'm here and now we're in the middle of a podcast and boom, this makes sense. This adds up. I'm Eric Glazer. I'm here. This is happening. Boom. If this was a dream, we'd just literally be sitting here right in blue this moment and you'd be sitting here being like, but you'd believe it mm-hmm. and you'd go along with it. Why? Because you're totally removed from context. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can believe all kinds of crazy shit in your dreams because you've removed context. You've removed any sense of anything that's that you think you know and then boom, now you're now now all of a sudden you're dr- just randomly driving down a road and getting in a car accident. And you're mm-hmm. like But you're like, "Well, I guess I'm in my car." Yeah. And I guess I just saw that accident happen, so I guess, you know, that happened. Yes, and that's what they do with movies. Mm-hmm. Opening scene, opening credits, your mind just goes, did that guy just say something in British? <laughs> We're here, baby. <laughs> Am I in England now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, a weird, it's a weird weird stuff, dude. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. They get into some crazy stuff over there. Mm. I think, did we even talk about the queen? The queen passed away. We we briefly touched upon the queen on the Older Shaw podcast, which I must say, excellent fucking podcast. Yeah, that was a great, great one. I had a glass of your birthday scotch, which uh, I don't know if I've told you this in person, really fucking good. I'm not just saying that because I could have just not said anything. Yeah. I could have just said thank you on my birthday and drank it and been like, this is terrible. Yeah, yeah. It literally is as good as any scotch i ever had i wasn't expecting it because it has like a fucking italian sounding name it's like this doesn't sound (laughs) scottish at all eric give me italian scotch fucking dick um i drank it and i was like i had i had i got home from the game on sunday poured myself a glass and first thing on my recommended youtube video of course because youtube knows me is our own podcast (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, YouTube, how'd you know? How'd you know? Susan Wojcicki, <laughs> you got me again. <laughs> I think I'll watch this thing that I was a part of. <laughs> <laughs> so I popped it on. I swear to God, I sat there drinking the scotch, and I watched the whole tail end of the podcast where I left off from last time I was drinking a glass of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fucking great, dude. I was like, this is golden stuff, dude. Yeah. Those are always good apps. <laughs> Golden For anyone stuff. who hasn't listened, go go listen to the older Shaw app, and then go go listen to all the other ones because yeah. they're usually bangers. They're usually bangers, and, I'm, and I feel bad for saying usually they're always bangers. Yeah, and look, look, we've done two. This is the two hundred eighty fifth episode. Uh, you know, some are better than others, mm. but none are bad. There's very few that I've ever thought were bad, and it was usually the guest's fault. Yeah, for sure, and. You know, at that point, it's like, you know what? You live and you learn, mm-hmm. you know? But uh, no, go on about the queen. I'm sure because it's important. I, we didn't really go too far into the queen on the last episode. Oh, uh, I mean, I was just trying to think of big news things that have happened recently. Big and news. I feel like that was probably one of the bigger things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely huge. Yeah. The um, queen died. Twitter was like, not in an uproar, but they're just like celebrating, posting jokes. Mm-hmm. Everyone like... I guess like boomers and up were like, why are you guys making fun of someone dying? And it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> now I'm glad you brought up the queen in this context because in this context... It is funny. It, it's hilarious. <laughs> but also it makes sense. Why, this is something that Americans have never understood. I, as an American, can account for this. I don't know why we're supposed to care. I mean, I get that it's sad, but also like... You know, a month ago, one of the old prime ministers of Japan was like assassinated on the campaign trail. Mm-hmm. No one gave a shit. Yeah, but that's because it's like, dude, come on. It's like I, I heard about it. Look, it's just like anything else. I feel closer to shit that happens in Britain than I do in Japan because we speak the same language. OK, mm-hmm. when I hear their newscast going the queen has died today. I'm like, oh shit. Like, I don't really care, but that sucks. I understand. Mm -hmm. I don't care, but at least I understand. When I hear the Japanese, I'm like, all right, dude, can somebody say this in English so I can pretend to care? And then they do. And I'm like, all right, it's too late now. (laughs) I already don't care anymore. No, that was fucking weird. 
But like as far as the queen and shit goes, it's like in the context of this conversation, we're talking about the foundations of blah, 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 fucking blah. Um, now I kind of get it. I kind of get the queen now. Mm. I don't care. Yeah. But I understand. Chris Rock style. <laughs> Wait. So what what made you understand? Because I still don't get it. The queen no longer has any significant, if any, political power. Now, depending on how lizard you want to get with this, depending mm-hmm. on how David, like Alex Jones, you want to get with it. I mean, she may not have like power in the government or she didn't have power in the government. I mean, but they're still the the royal family. They were still fucking bajillionaires. Yes. She had the the biggest diamond in the world on her crown. Mm-hmm. Now, like, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard three great takes. Take number one. Human beings have a propensity for celebrity culture. Mm-hmm. We have a propensity for gods and the idea of worshiping and idolizing. So what you notice... Uh, in terms of British culture is, uh, or in terms of American culture is we don't have a royal family, but we yeah, do we have, have Hollywood. Have Hollywood. We have p- celebrities that we kind of look to and follow their gossip and constantly, oh, what are they doing? Who's marrying who? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Now, I don't get all wrapped up in that, but people do. Yeah. People care. There's entire magazines whose entire business model is just talking about other people like we're in high school and they're the popular kids. I've always thought that was a ridiculous concept. I've always never understood the fascination. Your gods are Joe Rogan and Tim Dillon, though. Yes, 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 yes. (laughs) I consider them my colleagues. (laughs) Fellow podcasters. (laughs) We're all on this boat together, right, Joe? (laughs) Um, But in Britain... They don't have a Hollywood per se. They have celebrities and they give a fuck about Harry Styles, whatever, fucking who cares. But they have the same thought process of like this people, these like the like like the queen was their Betty White. Yeah. Or better yet, the royal family is kind of like they're like Kardashians or something like that. Like they're just Mm. constantly who who's 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 fucking who? Who's the prince? Who put out a sex tape? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So there's that. So now that take that first take made me first understand why British people even give a fuck in the first place on a cultural surface level. Second take is the understanding that the Queen is a figurehead and a representation of British culture. It is a fundamental thing where she is a symbol of what Great Britain is is like it's easy to get lost and caught up in the mix of like you know if you're too far removed from where you come from you just become again this very meldable thing you have no sense of identity it's very easy if you have no history or culture or any context for somebody to tell you who you are and what you're doing and what's good and what's bad so much in the same way that having a sense of identity in your personal life is a very good defense against being swept up into the wrong things and believing in the wrong ideologies and things like that, it's very important on a societal level for there to be certain representations of what you are. What is England and Scotland and fucking Wales and Northern Ireland and like where do you guys come from? It's kind of fucking crazy whether you like it or not that that lineage has been, you could trace Queen Elizabeth's ancestry back to fucking Louis the fucking whatever and Charlemagne. And you look at like, where did the royal family start? Oh my God, the fucking 13, 12, 1100s. Like it's insane that it has been going on that long. And when you look at the queen now, what you're really doing is looking at your history. You are looking at, we might think that we're this new thing. We got, England is not what England was 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 1,000 years ago. But it's like, you know what? We still have that connection to that. And as a country, that's important. Mm -hmm. And I almost envy that. I envy that Great Britain's celebrity culture is more centered around their own personal history and and what makes them unified versus our celebrity culture, which is based around what, what, who's like we? It's almost enviable. 
Mm-hmm. It's so in that way, it's hard for me as an American to say this is so stupid. Why do you care? When in reality, a British person could be like, dude, y- you literally had an entire week talking about Adam Levine's DMs, <laughs> and now it you're shitting. Funny. It was funny, <laughs> <laughs> much like. No, I'm just much kidding. like all the dead queen <laughs> tweets. No, but you're you're a fan of you're a fan of the now late queen, I guess, huh? Mm. You're a fan of her now. Not necessarily a fan. I'm just a fan of the the idea. I am. I'm not a fan. Mm-hmm. I respect. I respect culture, okay. and I respect that. Like, like I think it's dope that like. When Indian people get married, they wear like the fucking like garb and shit. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I think it's dope when I go. So you have like a deep respect for the queen now. I have a deep respect for the for the idea of a queen. Okay. I don't know anything about Queen Elizabeth. I I, I know that she is apparently cool. Um, she you know I don't fucking know. It's cool that she reigned reigned from 1952 or whatever. Like that's a fucking long ass time, and like. That's dope. But more so, I have a respect for the institution. And when I say respect, it doesn't even mean that I like it. Because you can dislike someone and still respect them. Point in case, going back full circle, I respect Putin. (laughs) I respect Putin. Do I like him? I don't think so. Doesn't sound like a great dude. But I tell you what, um... You know what? When you're in a UFC fight and you're fighting a dude, um, the biggest mistake you can make is not respecting them. You could hate them all you want, but if you don't respect them enough to treat them as a worthy adversary, that's usually when you get your ass kicked. Yeah. So you, it is foolish. I guess like so. What you're respecting is how dangerous they are. I'm respecting that this guy. Yes. Well, you're not I, respecting Putin for invading Ukraine and yes, all, absolutely, and blowing up the pipeline to the UK. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> it's like at the same time, it's like respect comes down to putting yourself in someone else's shoes, mm. and I think that ultimately, like you can again, you can disagree with someone. Like, that's the classic American thing. It's like, I don't like what you're saying, and I don't agree with what you're saying, but I respect your right to say it. See, respect goes deeper than personal opinion. Respect is like, yeah, I don't like the fact that he's taking measures to fuck with my life in terms of fucking with our fuel supply and blah, 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 blah. I also don't like the fact that our own leaders are making that possible. Um, But more so... I respect the fact that if I was in his shoes, I'm making the right moves. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he's about his shit, you know? And it's like, if just going back to the fighting metaphor, it's like if you don't look at the guy who's fighting you and go like, this guy is a good fighter. Like he's a good fighter. You don't want to walk into the Nash, the fucking world championship heavyweight fight and go, this guy's a fucking chump. I didn't even, I fucking got wasted last night. I got wasted last night. This guy sucks. I don't like this guy. Then you get knocked out. You go in and be like, I trained for this for fucking three months because this guy's fucking good. I'm just hoping that I'm slightly better, you know? So when it comes to respect, it's like, yeah, I fucking respect Putin. I respect people that were kind of like, like even like you talk about like, uh, I watched a documentary on Robert E. Lee recently, the general for the Confederate Army. And he was like a highly decorated American general for the, for the United States. He was from Virginia. And when the, here was the ironic thing about the whole situation with that. And it really does, we've talked about this on the podcast before, but it's one of my favorite uh, examples of just understanding people's mindsets and understanding that people's decisions aren't necessarily a mark of who they are uh, at all the time. Um, he was a highly decorated union general. When the Civil War broke out, he was faced with a massive conflict, which was, he's an American, yes, but he's also a Virginian. And his homeland, his people, are going to war. Is he going to fight against his hometown? Is he going to bring an army into the town that he grew up in and burn it down? Mm -hmm. Is he going to shoot at his neighbors? So he had this massive conflict of being like, look, dude, I don't want this war to happen. 
And he eventually came to the decision. He was like, yeah, I'm an American, but I'm, an a Virgin- I'm a Virginian first. And what's ironic about that is I'm pretty sure I, this could be wrong. This could be an embellishment or a sen- uh, sensationalized, but I'm pretty sure I don't think he owned slaves. And I'm pretty sure the general for the Union Army kind of did. Or something like that. It was something where, like, the guy that fought for the good side was actually, like, you know, like, also kind of a piece of shit, too. It just mattered, like, what side they were on. Um, Don't quote me on that. All I'm basically getting at is, like, one of my least favorite takes on the Civil War when people look about, like, oh, why did, you know, all these fucking pieces of shit in Alabama were fighting for slavery? It's like, no. Yeah, Robert Robert E. Lee went down in history as a traitor. Yes. (laughs) So, like. Yeah. If but all it, this is true, this is groundbreaking. Well, yes, he went down in history as a traitor, yes, but not really, because also he was honored with full honors when he died by the United States government. Like, when he surrendered at Appomattox, which is also a great Civil War story, the Civil War began and ended in the same guy's backyard. Hmm. It's true. The first shots of the Civil War were fired in this dude's backyard in, like, Virginia or something, and when they eventually, like, five years later they met in that same dude's house ulysses s grant and robert e lee because middle initials were huge back then Mm -hmm. they met in that same guy's house and signed the treaty and robert e lee came in in full fucking military garb and ulysses s grant came in in like sweats (laughs) fucking fubu (laughs) sweats and he was like all right dude you surrendering or what and at the end they shook hands the fucking union military escorted him out and it was an honorable surrender. This is another thing that people of modern day don't understand. Honor. Honor. Honor in losing and honor in winning. Yes, you fought a valiant fight. Many people died. Many of whom were not fighting because they were evil. Your average guy, I cannot stress this enough and I will never stop saying this. Your average guy in Alabama. In, look, I drove through uh, Virginia on the way to uh, Miami a month ago. And there are places in Virginia in 2022 that I would be surprised that they have internet. Yeah, It's insane how fucking detached from the, the world that we're living in they are. And that's not a knock on them because in many ways they're probably happier. And this isn't me doing that typical like urbanite city guy thing being like, oh, these fucking like unevolved stupid idiots in the fucking flyover. It's like, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that like it's a different world. Imagine that 170 years ago. Take that same place in Virginia in 2022 and now subtract 170 years. And yeah. now you're talking about a place that's so far removed from what's going on in New York City. It takes it's a fucking one week horse ride to fucking New York City. They don't fucking know what's going on up there. They don't know what's going on in fucking Florida. Or, you know, Florida was a fucking state, barely, at that point. It's like, they are just involved in what's going on in their community. They might get a newspaper that says, North's fucking with us, we're going to war. And they just go, and all your fucking neighborhood friends are like, dude, yeah, they're, they're like, the fucking North is coming down, they just burned down Richmond, they're coming down to our fucking city, they're burning us next, like, what are we gonna do? We gotta fight back. So they all fucking enlist and fight for their home. They fight for their country. That's not a bunch of fucking poor people that somehow managed to own slaves fighting for slavery. The average person doesn't own slaves. Let me wake up call for most people. If you don't currently have a housekeeper in your home in in Roland Park, you would not have owned slaves. Now, I'm sorry, you don't. If you're just a dude who rents an apartment, I don't you could have been the most racist person ever. You don't have a slave. Didn't mean you had money. Didn't mean you have money. Just being racist doesn't make you rich. Surprisingly. At least not now. <laughs> At least not now. <laughs> hey, you're racist. Here's some money. No, that's not how it works. So the average person, the overwhelming majority of people that put on a gray uniform and fought for the South were just people who were fighting for the guy next to them and their family at home and their mother and father and their neighborhood and the place they grew up with and the fucking farmland that they've been fucking raising by themselves without the help of slaves every fucking day. So it is incredibly stupid and short-sighted to then look back in history. And I use the same metaphor for even Nazi Germany. It's like, look, are we suddenly supposed to believe that fucking one million people or whatever in Germany are just evil people or was it a bunch of people just doing what they thought was right for them at the moment to to preserve themselves and their family and blah 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 blah. so when you look at history that way it's easier to understand a 
context, and B, the idea of respect. Because right now, if Maryland went to war for some, let's take any fucking issue. Let's, let's say that a civil war started over abortion. Whatever, fine, who cares? Abortion. Now, Maryland is a blue state. Maryland would probably side with the pro-choice side of this metaphorical civil war we're doing. I personally don't have a strong opinion either way. I'm not willing to die on either hill. Like, you know, we've talked about abortion ad nauseum on this podcast. We both have similar views on it in terms of like, you know, there's a limit, basically. That's my stand. There's a fucking limit. Um, so am I willing to pick up a gun and kill somebody for the for the right to choose or the right not to choose? Not really. But given that I'm in a blue state, um, if fucking South Carolina started marching up here and shooting at the Wrecker Theater, mm -hmm. I'm fucking fighting for Maryland. I'm fighting, I guess, for pro-choice. Not because I care that much, but because you, you just tried to play burn there down. eventually. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to play there. You just tried to burn down Towson Best, dude. Get the fuck that's, out of my town. That would be the last straw for me. That would you'd have to fight. So that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not just a bunch of evil people. So look, Putin, Russians, give them some goddamn respect, dude. They're putting up a solid fight. You got to give them that. You got to give them that. Now that being said. Putin starts walking down Joppa Road. <laughs> Gloves are coming off, baby. Gloves He's are coming just off. Going down Michael Phelps' way. <laughs> oh, shit is over. <laughs> game over. When you uh, when you got a dip for your gig. What time is it? I haven't looked at the time. It's uh, seven thirty. Oh, it's probably shit. soon. Probably right? soon. Yeah, I got a dip. Um, guys. If your ears still work after me yelling at you, <laughs> yelling at you, respect the South, <laughs> respect Putin. <laughs> uh, if your ears still work, um, thanks for tuning in for yet another installment of the Live from the Studio podcast. Uh, it is the last day of September. Somebody wake up, Green Day. <laughs> Um, which now means that next week we're kicking off our coveted Spooktober series. Mm -hmm. That's right. Four October episodes culminating in what I hope winds up being the another scariest, the scariest podcast, podcast ever. Podcast ever. <laughs> if you play this podcast in reverse, <laughs> just listen to what we're saying. No, um, I would like to do a second uh, round of our what I would like to be yearly tradition of the Halloween Power Hour, dude. Mm. If we could get that going for our Halloween episode and have a little spooktober kind of thing going up to it. Not saying that we're going to really theme it that way, but you know, it's an episode in October. You can't help that it's in October. Maybe subconsciously our topics might become a little spookier. Mm -hmm. Or not. Who knows? Might get a little creepy. Might get a little creepy. Uh, maybe not spooky. Definitely creepy. Creepy and hopefully in the scary way. In a scary way. <laughs> I'd rather be creepy in a, no, I'd rather be scary in a creepy way than creepy, creepy in a scary, in a scary way. <laughs> <laughs> I think both are probably bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one sounds on the context. way worse. <laughs> um, as far as plugs on my end, got to flip the old calendar here. Obviously about to dip over to this September 30th Friday Valley Inn gig that you've now missed. No other gigs this week, and coming up next week to close out, to open up the first week of October, perennial every Tuesday in Towson, 5 to 8.30. Uh, that's Tuesday, October 4th, and every Tuesday. Also, if you are a Jew, that is apparently Yom Kippur, mm. and my calendar says it begins at sunset, which means that you can come to perennial from 5 until sunset and then uh, leave. Yeah, and, and make sunset around what is that the fourth you said on the fourth yes that'll sunset will probably be maybe 5 30 5 30 so come through make sure you leave all your come lights on before you hour. leave <laughs> don't start a tab yeah 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 don't definitely don't start a tab <laughs> i don't have to tell you guys that just all right pay for your, just pay the first time you don't have to worry about getting the, the check later uh october 6th thursday october 6th i'm coming back to walker's tap and table in glenwood um Kind of a far drive, but when I played there yesterday, uh, one of the waitresses was like, oh my God, I saw your band at the horse last week. And I was like, you guys come there? Cool. 
Okay, cool. I made it a hike. Yeah, a hike, dude. It's 45 minutes. It's no joke. I mean, look, it's still technically, I guess, it's 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 very on the line between Baltimore Metro and DC Metro. They didn't have the Orioles game on. They had the Nats game on. So that's how I look at it. Um, and then, you know, this is a week of repeats. Basically, if you missed last week, everything I did last week is happening again this week. I played at Perennial last week. I'm there this week. I played at Walker's last week. I'm there this week. I played at Valley Inn last week. I'm back there again this coming Friday, October 7th. This Ooh. time, just me, 5 to 8. My first Friday of the month residency at Valley Inn, 5 to 8. It's getting cold. Let me say one thing. Uh, fall understood the assignment. The second, the last day of summer ended, the weather was like, dude, we're getting cold. Yeah, we're dropping I mean, it was, 20 degrees It was immediate. Instantly. I, I was at the beach until like 7 p.m. every day two weeks ago. And now it's like I can't even imagine opening up the store. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I'm, I'm cold in here right now. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I'm almost going to return this AC. Um, and then uh, last but not least, of course, Saturday, October 8th, fulfilling my, well, it's not technically the first Saturday, but I'm attending a wedding tomorrow, which is the first Saturday of October. So we bumped it up a week. Usually first Saturdays at Nacho Mama's in Towson. This month, it's going to be Saturday, October 8th. Some would even say the second Saturday. A second Saturday spooktacular at Nacho Mama's in Towson from 4 to 7. Uh, at Jimmy Seleski, uh, at Sophomore MD. I swear to God we have a new single coming out. It's coming out this month. We just, we're just we finishing up the album art right now. I heard it. It's good. Eric heard it. It's real, guys. It's real. It's a real single. I'm not just making this shit up. Um, Eric, what do you guys got coming out? Okay. You guys, you and you. Hey, you guys. Uh, just follow me at Eric Glazer on everything. And of course, follow the podcast at LFTS Podcast all across the board. But of course. But of course. Till next week, folks. Yeah, see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.